Yes, so as I have said in the introduction, you would have to download two different protected areas. And um, I have done that for Brazil. So when you go to the World Database on Protected Areas, you can click here on Explore Protected Areas, where you can actually filter them according to region, countries, or the individual uh, protected areas. So you would go to Countries and then uh, type in Brazil and here you can download this data set for Brazil and the areas I will be referring to in the practicals as this one here Paracana I don't know how to pronounce it properly I'm sorry for that so to all people watching from Latin America please excuse my pronunciation and the second one would be this biological reserve here. Um, so when you download them as a shapefile, or actually the whole data set, and then you would select these, uh, you can upload them into Google Earth Engine. So I'm not really sure if you have worked with Google Earth Engine before, but I would like you to um, understand what we are seeing here. Google Earth Engine is a script based um, cloud computing um, which we can make use of to work with remote sensing data without necessarily downloading it, pre-processing it, um, doing our analysis, but we actually call data sets within the script, work with these data sets within the script, do the analysis within the script. So that makes it easier for you to follow what I'm actually talking about without handling different programs, file types, and so forth. At the right, you have three different um, options here, scripts, docs, and assets. And in the middle, you would work with your script. We do that together, don't worry. And on the right, you can actually see the tasks you um, let Google Earth Engine do for you, or you can print some outputs. Don't worry, we'll do that together. Um, so to upload the two shapefiles, the two areas I was talking about, you click here in Assets on New and then Upload um, Shapefiles. So those would be those two shapefiles. You would see them as assets. I have a lot of them. I hit some of them. And here with this Sharing uh, button, similar to Android or any other um, sharing buttons you're familiar with, you can actually share um, this asset and also um, combine it uh, with the scripts uh, we will be doing now. So let's go to the script section and let me open the script on deforestation. And here you can see that I have uploaded these two shapefiles which I have named indigenous conservation area and in category 1A for the IUCN category protected area. Actually, to make it a little bit easier for you to follow, I will go through with you through the script step by step. And then instead of me typing in and you follow me typing, I would just read out the ready script bit by bit and deactivate some of the stuff which is to follow so that you can actually understand the very very basic analysis we do here so i click on run and what we did now is we simply added two layers to our map one would be the communal area, communal protected area, the other one would be the category 1A area. And I have done that by writing something we call map add layer. Then I specify the layer which has to be added to the map. This one is just an empty specification, which we'll do not here to not complicate it further. And then I name the output indigenous conservation area and conservation area IUCN category 1A. 
Those are the two layers you see here, added to the map by the Google Earth Engine function map add layer. And those variables, just to recall again, I have <coughs> incorporated them from the assets, the shape files I have uploaded to the assets. So far for our conservation area. What we want to do now is we want to tap on the deforestation data set, which I have mentioned before. And you could either search for the database here, search places and data sets, or you already know how to call it, for instance, by this tutorial, and then you would just type the source in the brackets after the variable image, um, after the definition of engine image. So this means the variable, I called it Hansen change, would be an image from the source UMD Hansen global forest change. That's how it is named in Google Earth Engine data catalog. And what I did then is I print the output and named this print as well, just to not be confused. And prints would be printed here to the console so that we can actually see what we are doing. I would like us to do that. So you run the script after you typed in the variable and the print function. We didn't add it to the map yet. And then you can see we added something which has is of the type image. And this image has different bands. And if you unfold these bands here, you can see the different data sets, this Hansen image, which is a data set itself, actually um, com comprehends or combines. So we have the tree cover, which was mapped in 2000. And after that, the loss and gain and loss year. So loss would be the total forest loss, gain would be the total forest gain, and loss year would be the year of the forest loss. And we can now, in Google Earth Engine, make use of these bands by selecting them. So we go now to the other lines I wrote here. So what I've done here is I defined a variable which is called loss image. And that's simply Hansen change, which we defined before. Select the band named loss, which is this one, number one. And I usually use caps in these variables. Not everyone likes that, but for me, it eases a reading and differentiation. Then I have a second variable, which I called gain image, a third one tree cover, and also I have selected these. So this is just now for the display option. And we will do that in a bit, but we can click now run. And then I printed one loss image for you to understand that we now have one image with one band only.